Okay. Um, thank you very much, very much for the invitation. Uh, well, among all these archaeologists here, I feel a little bit like an exotic bird, uh, including my dear colleague, because uh, I'm a historian and Florian Herbeck is an architect and our, our presentation is about a building project initiative that still has to be constructed, so maybe further archaeologists may excavate it. And I see also some other differences to archaeologist um, uh, challenges because uh, I think we, we don't have this um, let's see, um, consciousness of being intruders in one way or the, or the other because we, we feel like a little bit like an, we give a solution uh, to a very mundane problem. What shall you do with bones that appear on a uh, current uh, uh, graveyard in Luxembourg and in a greater region? And this is now the talk I want to continue. Uh, this project is an outcome of an ongoing project called here Material Cultures in Space of Remembrance, a study of cemeteries in Luxembourg in the context of the greater region. Um, what's the idea behind it? Uh, actually, uh, we are investigating the evolution, uh, past and present, of the material culture of cemeteries uh, in Luxembourg. And uh, doing that, we have a lot to do with stakeholders, with communities, and so on. And then we got confronted with a, uh, uh, with a problem, which is also, thank you. OK, it's working. Which is also a kind of outcome, which is in one way very trivial, but uh, very revealing. Because in the very moment around death, when a person becomes, I don't know, a dead person, a body, a material thing, you have a high, uh, um, high rate, this, this, this space is high regulated by laws, by customs, and so on. Uh, that goes on until you're under the surface. And then it's completely a lacune when it comes, when the, this bodily part uh, resurfaces. Uh, and um, one of the other outcomes here in uh, Luxembourg is that exactly this question uh, is left unanswered. And we have the feeling nobody actually is caring about what is going on with the leftovers. Uh, because on the continent and in this area, it's usually that the grave plots are uh, reused at least one, two, three times. But there's no regulation, actually, what you should do with the rest. Because there's, there always remain some, some rests here. And uh, when you have five uh, communes in uh, or, or communities in, in Luxembourg usually have five solutions to the problem. So in one, they just take the remains, put it in a, a sealable plastic bag, and they make a hollow in the ground or in the niche of the grave plots, and then they put the next, uh, 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 the next coffin in. Uh, uh, other ones um, have a common vault where they collect the, the bones. The third one, like in Steinzel, they just closed the cemetery. And that, that's the thing. Uh, we we uh, come into the discussion with the uh, community because it would leave a big, important space right in the heart of the city open or useless because it would have to close the, uh, uh, the cemetery. And our idea was to, for this solution, I just give you. Okay, first thing. Okay, now. Okay. Uh, let's see what we are talking about. So we have here Maxwell, a small but highly diverse country in the, uh, in the center of the Great region. So it's the neighboring areas of France, Belgium, and Germany. This is also an area of investigation. And we are supposed. Another one. <laughs> okay. Okay, check. Good. Uh, and we said, yeah, why don't we revitalize in a new fashion way, an old steel way to make a sustainable cemetery? So, and, uh, and there are uh, some examples uh, in the greater region of uh, ossuaries. Uh, I just give you two examples. Uh, this is the Divine of Troyes. This is now France, but it used to be part of the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And this is different style. So this is 
building its own rights, which are not of fair ventilation. And it's still part of a living cemetery, but it's officially not in use. And they have this original way to deposit the, the bones in this way. Uh, the other one is also close by. It's typical for the area of Lorraine. It has this loggia type style, and, and there was already intervention for aesthetical reasons. So they lined up the bones in a presentable, visualized way. Uh, but this is actually not the way we would like to build our, um, our or suggest our project. Uh, a last glimpse, some remains in Luxembourg. Uh, there are only two ones. One is actually a dropping hole because first there was a, a full niche where you could see and interact with the bones, and then they consecutively started to, to close it and then have more uh, dropping box for the <laughs> from the box for the bones, and uh, then they finally sealed this off. And the last the official closure was already in the nineteenth century. Was already in the nineteenth century. Okay, uh, but on this point, I would hand over to my colleague Florian Hertwig, who will explain after the first step of our community based project. After the first meetings with the town council, public presentation and discussion, what we want to, to build, the presentation of or the anticipation of the, the project from the architectural side. You try this one? Okay, good luck. How many minutes are there? Um, five minutes. Five minutes, great. Good, good in time. Okay, thank you very much. So let me present quickly the project. Okay, so here you see the site in Steinmetzel. It's a very small municipality in the north of uh, the capital of Luxembourg. And this is, this is actually the, the, existing, this is the existing part of the cemetery built in the 80s, right? The 80s, yes. 90s. And we were invited to design actually the extension which you can see here. What is quite interesting to see and what is really a challenge is that you have a difference of um, uh, of a level from here to here, it's like eight meters. So there's a slope of eight meters, which is quite important. So what we decided, we decided to divide the, the whole site into different fields of, of graves. And you see here the retaining walls, which create and platforms of the graves, and which can create, thus you have a kind of different kinds of topologies of grave, graves also they probably in, in relation to the different confessions. And they are all laid by a sort of subtile kind of walking, walking system uh, with different kinds of squares. And in the, in the center, in the heart, you have the like, new ossuary, um, a series of objects that you can see here. And um, so I will show you the and what is really interesting for an architect, because you, you were talking about uh, regulations, but as an architect, you are always you know, confronted with regulations like architectural regulations, urban regulations, in terms of insulation, and here there's almost nothing. So it's a, it's a dream for an architect to be, it's, I would say it's pure phenomenology. Um, so it's only about the pure sensation of space and materiality of architecture. So what you can see here, this is, we designed a sort of entrance uh, a building, an entrance, an object, a kind of small installation. And then you, the, this is actually the level of the, of the top, existing topography. And once you enter in this kind of small, like James Turrell kind of installation, you take this, you, you descend here, you, you walk down a slope. So it's the idea that you are almost immersed by uh, the topography, and then you get into a sort of, of garden, which is here, which you can see here, and the bones and the skulls are behind walls of glass bricks. So the idea is that you cannot see them directly. I think this was really important. You get, just get the illusion of the bones and the, and the, and the skulls, but, um, but you cannot see them directly. So this is the kind of, of, of installation. Uh, here, so very quickly, I'm sorry for the quality of the renderings, I just got them 
like uh, yesterday evening. So they're not perfect yet, but you can see here, this is the, the extension, this is the entrance building. And you can see it here, the object from the other side. And this is actually not exactly what we intended to do, but in terms of special impression, it's quite uh, precise. But those would be the, the glass bricks. And uh, you know that glass bricks are translucent, so you can get the illusion of the, of the, of the bones behind this wall, but you cannot see them directly. That was really important. And this is a kind of garden. I mean, there are couples of metaphors which I would not explicit uh, today. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>